Welcome back to Check Out the Stat by your girl, Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby. So today we're talking free agency moves, Kenny Pickett versus Justin Fields, Angel Reese's relationship status update, and what's with all these younger athletes dating older women. But first, I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. With Underdog, you can earn money by making picks on your favorite players. You can try the app in California, Texas, and New York, and the list goes on. If you want to play along, go download Underdog Fantasy, use code STAT, it'll match your deposit up to $100, and you'll get a special pick. So before we get into today's show, let's do our underdog picks. Tonight, the Pacers will play the Warriors. Underdog Fantasy has Steph Curry at 26 and a half points. I'm actually going to go lower. You know, he hasn't been scoring that high as of lately, except in his game versus the Lakers. So I'm going to put him lower. And we got Draymond Green at eight and a half rebounds. I'm actually going to go higher because his recent stats were eight rebounds, 12 rebounds, eight rebounds. So I think that he can get more than eight and a half. And Tyrese Halliburton is at 11 assists. So he hasn't had 11 assists as of recently, but in the last Warriors game, he did. So for this one, I'm just going to take a chance and say that he's going to go higher. Okay, y'all. So for today's episode, this is going to be a little bit different because I wanted to have a true sit down discussion where I can talk about my thoughts and debate with one of my friends. So today, I am joined with the one and only Miles Johnson, a.k.a. Real Talk with MJ. Hey, What's Miles, up? how What's are you up? doing today? How's it going, Stat? It's I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready to get into this football, all of that. Yeah, get into the football talk. Well, one, love to have you back on the show. I loved our debate and discussion last episode that we had together. And your team has had a lot of moves recently. And so is mine. So there's a lot of things that we got to get into and discuss. But before we get into that, I know that you've had some career changes recently. Is there some things that you would like to share with the audience? Because I've been peeping you doing your thing. You know, uh, working on Fox Sports. Uh, right now with first things first, you know, with Chris Broussard, Nick Wright uh, and all of them. So, yeah, it's pretty cool to be on the production, you know, and all of that. And I love New York, though. Like thing about New York, they'll have you like out of bed at 7 a.m. because <laughs> they honking and they honk for like eight seconds long. Like, yeah, they, they really be honking, like get you out of bed, <laughs> get straight to it. So. Now, I like what, you know, everything about New York and I'm having a blast at Fox. So I yeah, appreciate dope. the shout out. That's dope. Yeah, I've been seeing your work um, with them. I've seen like your stuff being aired and then I've seen your work on your personal account. So I have to give a shout out to that. And as far as New York, ironically enough, I have not been in years. That's definitely a trip that I need to take next, but hopefully it'll come soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So free agency officially began March 13th, and we've seen a lot of major changes within the league. So far, who do you believe won free agency? Look, I could be biased. I could say my Eagles. I mean, we did get better on defense, on offense. I know we're going to talk about that, but yeah. I'm going to be unbiased in this. I'm going to say the Texans. Okay. The Texans. Not mad at that answer. And so you have a Texans team with a rookie quarterback, CJ Stroud, a rookie head coach, D'Amico Ryans, that shocked the whole football world. I mean, CJ Stroud had the best rookie season ever. And now they're retooling. They got Daniil Hunter from the Vikings, who had double digit sacks. He was he had a career year last year. He was highly sought after. They got him. They were in the Saquon Barkley sweepstakes. The Eagles went ahead and picked him up. But who'd they get? Joe Mixon, right. who the Bengals were about to release. Then they were like, oh, we got the Texans who want to trade for him. Now, some are saying that they don't like the extension, but I feel like when you have a rookie quarterback, do the best to just surround him with weapons all over the field. So you're going to have Tank Dell coming back from injury. Nico Collins had his breakout year. I feel like the Texans are the biggest threat to the Chiefs in the AFC, not the Ravens, who for some reason they don't want to run the ball when they've been running the ball yeah. all year in the playoffs. The Bengals, I mean, Joe Burrow, he be, he be injured too much. I don't really right. trust it. And 
just Ch- Chargers, Justin Herbert, they in the same division as the Chiefs. Like, yeah. they might, they're not even going to get a, a home playoff game. So, yeah. I feel like the Texans are going to really have complete dominance over the AFC South. Mm-hmm. And it might just be you no know, rivalry between CJ Stroud and Patrick Mahomes. So, I'm going to say right. the Texans. The Texans, okay. I'm not mad at that answer because I think they definitely gave CJ Stroud more tools that he needed to bring it to that next step, bring it to that next level. As far as Joe Burrow's situation, I just feel bad because his injuries are really, I'm not going to say a detriment to his legacy because he still is Joe Burrow, but there's a lot of things that we need to see. And it's like the moment you're caught lacking, that gives the, another team the opportunity to catch up. And I feel like that is what is starting to happen with Joe Burrow. I'm hoping that's not the official case, but that's what I'm seeing so far. But I'm not mad at Texans answer. Like CJ Shot has been doing his thing and he has more tools, but... I don't think I'm biased. I got to say the Steelers for sure, because duh. Okay. Omar Khan has made drastic changes to this team that has helped us a lot. First and foremost, we knew that we had a quarterback issue, right? I'm not going to lie. I am a big Mason Rudolph fan. I think that he did exactly what the Steelers needed to give us that push. But I think having Russell Wilson, I'm very optimistic, optimistic about him at the QB position than now having Justin Fields as a backup, I think that that's a pretty good spot to have, you know, just as a standard. I think that he can learn behind Russell Wilson. We only have him for a year and then that will set him up to kind of take over for him once he does leave. I think Pittsburgh kind of has a trend of doing that, having somebody take over. We, you know, we take good care of our quarterbacks. I'm not going to say we did so much good care with Kenny Pickett. Um, shout out to Kenny Pickett. But yeah. like I said, I think Mason Rudolph definitely did his thing. We got Russell Wilson for virtually nothing, which is a great what's asking your, what's price. What's your expectations? What's your um, expectations for next year? You know, I think that the season is going to start off slow. There's a lot that the team needs to adjust to. We know we have a new offensive coordinator, Arthur, Arthur Smith, and now having Russell Wilson in that position, you know, with our wide receiver like George Pickens. I got to see that Pickens to Wilson connection. I don't really know how it's going to go, but I'm optimistic. I think a lot of the questions people had is like, well, if Russell Wilson didn't perform how we expected at Denver, how can you expect him to perform at the Steelers? I think everything is just the waiting game. That's all we can do just to see how things fit. Same thing with the Texans. Nobody thought that CJ Stroud was going to be able to come in on that team and dominate as quick as he did. And sometimes things happen. And then a top inside linebacker was an immediate need also for the Steelers. And we didn't have a consistent filler in that position. So now that we got Patrick Crane from the Ravens, you know, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable. I think the key word is comfortable. I'm not exceeding my expectations because I don't know where we're going to go with this, but I'm in a good spot. And then, like I said, George Pickens, got Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. Like we have a lot of good key pieces that I'm not mad about. And then we didn't have to give up too much. So I just think that we are in a safe space for a good trial and I'm excited to see what happens. It's a little scary because I've been saying a lot of things about Russell Wilson, but we'll see. Yeah. I think with y'all, it's going to be interesting, right? Because if the Steelers start off slow. Right. And I think it's going, it's reported that Russell Wilson, he's going to be, you know, the starter and he feels the backup. If they start off bad, yeah, they they gonna be quick. I heard right. a report they say if they don't like what uh, Russell Wilson is doing in training, training camp, camp, don't cut right. him. I'm like, dang, right? <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm so not the, even I mad know his, at that. He's gonna be short though. Yeah, I'm not even mad at that though because I think that we're being too favorable just because you know there are favorites. Like I think Steelers likes to have a family based team, which is great emotionally wise, but we got to start. If things need to be cut off, things need to be cut off. If he's not performing where we need him to perform, we got to be able to make that next move. And I think that is okay to say as a team, if you want wins, we're not here to satisfy everybody's feelings and emotions. We are here to win. And there's too many things on the table, just even being a Steelers fan and being part of this fan base and even being part of the organization that we cannot keep letting slide. We just can't. Yeah. So that's one of those things that it's like, I got y'all winning a playoff game. I had to do it. Playoff game. (laughs) You're like, that's it though. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's it yeah that's I have it. high hopes but of course even when Russell Wilson first got to Denver they had high hopes so I'm not fully gun ho but right now he is a Pittsburgh Steeler so I will support this man as long as he is in the uniform but I will be honest if he is not performing where we need him to perform at but starting off 
I'm not mad. We do have Justin Fields as a backup. We're going to kind of get into him as we, you know, go to our next questions. But we have some options. But all I know is that the situation as of right now is seemingly solved. So we'll go with that. Okay. So in reflection, yes, we talked about the teams that have won free agency in our opinions. What team do you think should have urgently made a move? I'll say the Jaguars. Okay. So here's my thing. You let go of Calvin Ridley. Right. It never makes sense to let go of your number one wide receiver right. for your young quarterback. Right. Like you, y'all moving backwards. Like what you're supposed to do is what happened with Josh Allen? They got him Stefan Diggs. They right. kept Stefan Diggs. What happened with Jalen Hurts? They acquire AJ Brown. He didn't start off with AJ Brown. People forget that. He started off with Devontae Smith. They acquire AJ Brown. Now he's having, you know, Pro Bowl years and going to Super Bowls and all that. So the Jaguars are moving backwards. They signed Gabe Davis for more money than the Eagles signed for Saquon Barkley. Right. How does that work? <laughs> How does that work? Like Gabe Davis, he's he's a good receiver. But he's a two. He's right. he's great as a two. You can't pay him as a one. So I mean, you, they got Christian Kirk, um, and I like the coach Doug Peterson. Uh, I feel like he should still be in Philly. But with Trevor Lawrence, you got to give him the, uh, the most amount of help that he needs. Right. And so if you can trade for a guy like Brandon Ayuk, who yeah, he was texting. I mean, he he was. I mean, he was on Twitter talking about. You know, he's twins with you and your coach. So right. I'm like, is he about to be a stealer? Right. I'm like, so I think the Jaguars should do everything in their power. I heard, you know, the 49ers, they want the 17th overall pick and Zay Jones. If it comes to that, do it. Because Brandon Ayuk, he's elite. Right. And Trevor Lawrence, he's going to need all the help that you know, he's going to get when you have C.J. Stroud and the Texans in your same division that – improve mightily after a breakout season. Right. Okay, good point. So the thing about Calvin Ridley, which I think is funny, maybe it's illusion. I definitely thought the Steelers are going to pick him up to go with George Pickens because that would have been a power move. I think that we need more depth at the wide receiver position. But with that being said, because of the things that the Bills have done, I think that they should have been the team to urgently urgently make a move because they have such a high ceiling, okay? They're 11 and 6, won the AFC East and lost in the divisional round. They were right there. I think that this is the team that should have been making more pickups. I think losing Gabe Davis to the Jags didn't really make up much sense. I'd rather have him and keep him on the team just in case. They lost a key defensive player in defensive end Leonard Davis, and I think that they could have made a lot more pickups for the team. Some other notable cuts is Tredavious White, Mitch Morris, wide receiver Deontay Hardy, and I think that they need another wide receiver pairing with Stefan Diggs. I think that this would have made a lot more sense to give the Bills offense that push that they need because once things become so stale for so long, This is when people start looking at the coaches and the coaches don't want to get blamed. So they start looking at the quarterback and you can't just keep pin picking each individual player because it's going to come down to what the team is doing as a whole. I mean, we know Josh Allen has a super big six year contract worth up to two hundred and fifty eight million dollars. They probably don't even have much money to work with because all that money is going to him. But if we keep seeing that they just keep getting to that point and not surpassing that, that's when we start asking, okay. What moves do we need to start making as an organization to build? Because if we're not building and we keep getting stuck at win, but not the overall winner, that's when it's like, all right, we got to do something different. So I think that the Bills, even though, you know, they got rid of a lot of players, I think they're heavily relying too much on draft picks. And once you get obviously lower in the totem pole for draft picks, I just think it gets a little bit more tricky. They might get lucky and get a Mr. Irrelevant, like a Brock Purdy in another position that they need filled. But I just think that doing all those changes right now may have hurt them because they've lost some key defensive pieces. I don't really know how it's going to go for them. And then, of course, the mm-hmm. Panthers, I think that they just kind of hit rock bottom. <laughs> like oh, rock They bottom. are just in yeah. the worst situation possible, and it's really sad to see Bryce yeah, Young. How low can you get? <laughs> yeah, like you, you can't. You can't get lowered. That's the problem. It sucks to see Bryce Young in this you know, position because – 
now people are questioning his talent as a quarterback. And we've seen, you know, the sparks of great talent that he has, but he has not been able to showcase that on the Panthers. And I don't foresee him being able to showcase that anytime soon. So sticky situation, but uh, that's what I think. Definitely could have made more urgent moves. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a good one though. The bills, because I think a lot of these teams that they have problems because they paid their quarterback, like a mega contract. Right. And so now you got to make business decisions like to, you know, be like under the cap, the cap space you see right. that with the Bengals. You, you see that with the Bengals, they signed Joe Burrow to all this money. Now you might trade T Higgins. He told right. him, I don't want to be on the franchise tag. Right. You know, Josh Allen and the bills, they had to cut Jordan Poyer and, you know, yeah. they lost some guys that was, you know, great pieces to what they built there. So right. you know, that's the thing though. Like if you can maximize the talent around a rookie quarterback, right. Which again, brings me back to like the Texans. Right. Um, and especially too with the uh, even even Jaguars too, yeah. Uh, because the guys, you know, he's not even Trevor Lawrence isn't even on a, a crazy contract, uh, but you're playing around and not signing guys to make him be the best quarterback he can be. So you see, like the good side of it with the Texans, you see the bad side of it with with the Jaguars, right? And then even as far as reconstructing quarterback contracts, I know that Patrick Mahomes, you know, has been open to it to help his team, and that's crazy coming from somebody who's actually we're actually seeing the wins from him and he still wants to do what he can to make his team the absolute best you know I don't know exactly how these contract situations are going but to see with other quarterbacks and them not even letting up I think Dak has mentioned that that may be happening for him but it's like you should want to especially when you're making that much money I know money's money and I get it like keep all the money that you want but like when it comes to just being able to cross over that hump, just giving up something that you can give to another player that would help your team as a whole, I think a ring is a lot more worth it. So, because it's part of your no, legacy. He's so taking like, the playbook out of Tom Brady. Yeah. Like, that's what Mahomes is doing. And Mahomes is more talented than Tom Brady. Right. So, for him to take a pay cut, I mean, it's overkill. I mean, now right. you can, you know, Sign these guys that you're gonna have up on your books, like right. Trent McDuffie, uh, and you're able to pay Chris Jones, who deserved that mega contract. So you know, I love what Mahomes is doing. He's serious. He's trying to three right. peat. He's trying to three right. peat. He's not playing no games. Right. And that's the point. Like he's making history. So I'm as much as how I feel about the Chiefs, I support it because I will never, you know, diss a winner. He's doing his thing. Shout out to him. Better than Tom Brady is still debatable, but we can get into that for another conversation for another day. Um, and then another question before we go to break and continue our discussion. How do you feel about the Eagles having Kenny Pickett versus Justin Fields? Oh, man. A plus move. <laughs> a plus move to sign Kenny Pickett. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. He wasn't that great of a starter. Yeah. But as a backup? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, Kenny Pickett, well, he's 14 and 10 in his career. Yeah. That's good. You won some games. And now you have, let's just say the worst case scenario happens. Maybe he hurts. He dislocates his finger like he did at the end of the season with the Giants. Or yeah. he was kind of playing on a bum on a bum knee, I think, because they knew, all right, we can't really sit this guy because we, we don't trust Marcus Mariota. But, like, Kenny Pickett, you got to be an absolute scrub to come in and mess up when you got Saquon Barkley in the backfield, yeah. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. I mean, like, then you're really like a scrub. Like, get out the league and go join, like, the UFL or something like that. Like, anybody can play well with those weapons. But right. I feel like with Justin Fields, I'm actually mad at the Eagles for even entertaining this. Really? Why are we even talking about Fields being the backup? That doesn't make any sense because what's going to happen? Oh, Hurts might have a bad stretch, maybe like two games. Maybe the Eagles, maybe they lose three games like the 49ers did, three right. games in a row last season. What's Philly media, what they going to say? Oh, man, if you if Justin Fields, hey, let's, get, let's give him a shot. Yeah. Justin Fields, the most important thing is that Justin Fields is going to be on the bench. Right. Mad. Thinking of himself, yo. 
If I had AJ Brown, Saquon Barkley, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, that offensive line, this you know what I didn't get yeah. in Chicago, imagine what I would do. So I think it's a A plus move because Kenny Pickett is content with being a backup. Yeah. Justin Fee wants to be a starter, rightfully so. And I support Fields. I think he has a lot, you know, left in the tank. I mean, he just started. It's not much more else, you know, it's not like he unloaded the clip. So yeah. I think that, you know, Fields has a lot of potential, but I don't want that potential in Philly. <laughs> and my last point is we got a similar situation to that with Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts with Carson Wentz and Nick Foles. Yeah. And Carson Wentz was always looking behind his back like, you know, if I mess up, I know Nick Foles is going to come in. I know Jalen Hurts is going to come in. And so he was a little bit – he was more mentally weak than I believe Hurts is. But still, the quarterback position, it's so, like – it's so important. You can't treat it like any other position. Yeah. At linebacker, you're going to need depth at linebacker. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you can you can switch that position easily. But quarterback, that's just that's just a very delicate spot and you don't want a toxic quarterback room. So I'm right. happy with Kenny Pickett. And I just don't want Fields being a backup for my franchise quarterback. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder how the 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 mental goes for, you know, Justin Fields and Kenny Pickett both being starter quarterbacks and then both ending up being backup quarterbacks. But like we've seen kind of last year, it was the year of the backup quarterback. So I feel like in Kenny Pickett's situation, if he wants to be this is about to be low key a bold take, if he wants to be a starting quarterback again, his best situation was staying in Pittsburgh. I know he was saying that he didn't want to play behind Russell Wilson, but Russell Wilson, we only have him for a year. I think that he would have been way more likely to continue having playing time, staying with the Steelers rather than going to the Eagles, because I think he's setting him up himself up to stay a backup quarterback. I don't think anything is happening to Jalen Hurts. I don't think anything's being moved for him. So it's just situational wise. I don't think it makes much sense because now Kenny Pickett will be known as Kenny Pickett, the backup, which sounds insane. I mean, at Pittsburgh, you know, he already kind of has to reprove himself in general because, you know, first round pick. That's what I'm saying. And I mean, like just being in the situation that he's now in and he, you know, he already played, you know, a good amount of games. People weren't highly impressed with him. That's why people were starting to prefer Mason Rudolph over him. So to go to the Eagles now be stuck at that backup QB position. I think he might have set himself up to stay that way for the rest of his career. So that's my only thing about it for him. It's good for you guys yeah. as far as your team, but for him as a person, as a quarterback, I just don't know if I think that that was the best move for him. So, hey, I know like how he looking at it. <laughs> you know, I get paid some cheese, you know, a couple million dollars to be a backup versus. Yeah. I'm in Pittsburgh behind Russ. Russ might, you know, I don't want that scrutiny, like, yeah. or just that bad energy. I think for him, I don't know. It was reports that, like, he didn't want to compete for this spot. I think, I think the Steelers were probably telling him, like, you know, no, nah, like, you can still compete. Like, it's not set in stone that Russ is going to be the starter. In his head, he's like, you ain't bring this guy in. <laughs> you don't bring right. Russell. Like, right. come on. Like, stop gabbing. Mike right. Tyler, like, come on, bro. It's not giving so like, I feel, I feel, I I understand why he would want to change the scenery. Yeah. Uh, and all that. Uh, I mean, he got benched for Mason Rudolph. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the end. You can't come back from that. So. You can't. Now, I'm glad. He's also, he was also an Eagles fan when he was younger. So, yeah. it just made perfect sense for him. He went to Pitt. He's staying in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Might as well play for, you know, his uh his team that he rooted for as a kid. Yeah, I definitely get that, too. I just don't think the money is more important than your legacy. But I see both sides for sure. You know, shout out Kenny Pickett, but it's about Justin Fields now. All right, y'all. So we're going to go to break. And when we return, we will discuss Caleb Williams. Don't go anywhere. Thank you. 
She called this thing about was toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about she it She wanna be free Why am I here this one? She wanna be free Hell, I don't wanna see her walk away I, I wish somebody told me the rules Disagreements let her win And it's cool Even when I'm right to say Welcome back. So now we're going to discuss Caleb Williams and I am joined back with Miles Johnson. Okay, so Robert Griffin III believes the Bears trading Justin Fields after three seasons shows this dysfunction for Caleb Williams. He says Caleb should pull an Eli. Does the treatment of Justin Fields raise concerns for Caleb Williams? What do you think, Miles? No, look, I'm a fan of Justin Fields. I wanted the Falcons to trade for him mm -hmm. because I mean that's a conversation for a whole nother day with the fact that they chose a guy coming off an ACL or an Achilles at 36 years old crazy like crazy over fields like fields has a much higher potential low risk why don't you do that but I feel like you know fields wasn't good in Chicago he wasn't good they got him they got him weapons they got him weapons, but as a pure pocket passer, he wasn't it. And he had a he had a good defense, like like so. Ultimately, I think with Fields, it ran its course. And it's always like if you have a GM coming in and he didn't pick you, you're always like, yeah, at your you're like you know, time with that franchise is gonna be yeah quickly quickly ending. Because the GM that's coming in is going to want to pick his guys because he's going to be judged on the guys that he picks, you know, to go ahead and win some games. Right. So you have a guy in Caleb Williams who is really like the most hyped number one overall pick since Andrew Luck. Yeah. Like you can't pass that up. It would have been interesting if the Bears like potentially traded down, drafted Marvin Harrison. And now Justin Fields, he has DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Marvin Harrison, and maybe some more draft capital that, that, that they can do to make another move defensively. They signed Jalen Johnson. They've been making moves. They signed my boy DeAndre Swift. People in Philly know how great he is, but he's a baller. He's a baller, and he wasn't used right. So the Bears, Ryan Poles, that front office, they've been making moves. Fields hasn't been done crazy wrong, I feel like. It's just like he wasn't performing. And again, as a pure pocket passer, like he wasn't it. He can run. But like when you have a guy in Caleb Williams who's throwing darts all over the place, it's like you got to go with that. That's just how it right. is. I mean, they did they did him a favor by sending him to Pittsburgh. Right. When I bet you if they traded fields a couple weeks ago, they could have got a third round pick. Yeah. Maybe even a second round pick. They, yeah. they traded him to where, you know, they felt like, you know, he could do well and, and, and all of that different conference. So I don't feel like the notion that the Bears aren't a good front office. Like, I think the best move they did was like trade. Well, they traded down. And now as a seven win team, they have the, the number one overall pick because that's the Panthers. Right. Pick. That's a great front office that played their cards right. So, again, the notion that Kayla Williams is going into a terrible situation. Last point, Joe Burrow, he went to the Bengals instantly, instantly made them contenders. Right. This is a franchise that ain't reached no Super Bowl. Like, they wasn't no perennial right. contender, all that. Like, he changed life. CJ right. Stroud changed life. One thousand percent. You changed life. Justin Fields, he had his shot. He ain't do it. Now it's not over for him. The jury's still out. 
Yeah. But again, you're going to have another guy in Kayla Williams coming up. And now the, now, now the pressure is on him to change life. So that's what he's got to do. He got weapons. He got Keenan Allen. He got DJ Moore. He got DeAndre Swift. Now it's up to him to make it happen. Right. I think that was a great take. Couldn't say it, couldn't have said it any better. I do think what Robert Griffin the third said was silly. Like, like you literally just said, Justin Fields just wasn't that guy for Chicago. And I think him being at Steelers gives him the opportunity to rebrand and rebuild himself. And honestly, the fact of the matter is the Bears have the number one pick in the NFL draft, right? It's like, if you know that your quarterback isn't performing at the level that you'd like him to, why would we keep working with him if we have the first pick and can get a generational talent in Kayla Williams? It just makes sense. Thanks. I think that team, the Bears is still going to be a good situation for him as a rookie quarterback. They didn't leave him with nothing. Literally, like you just said, CJ Stroud, nobody had the Texans for real, for real on their radar. I think that this is a great you know, situation for Caleb Williams to be in. I think pulling an Eli, it doesn't make sense. Like Caleb is not in there trying to like, oh, like if they don't, if they are not going to be the best situation for me, I'm just not going to go. Like he's not even on that type of vibe. That man just wants to win. We see how passionate he is about the game based off of his career at USC. So I think that this is a good setup. He got Keenan Allen, DJ Moore. The roster is still building up. He has a lot of people to work with. I think that this is a good opportunity for Caleb Williams to be in. And honestly, he should be excited. The only thing I'm worried about is a little bit of the team chemistry because there's a quote where somebody said, um, okay, quarterback Jalen Johnson, he said, you can't bring that Hollywood yeah. stuff into the building. We're going to see it through. You got to prove yourself. All this chat, if y'all don't just welcome in your number one pick, like y'all should be winning. Don't come and be like, yeah, if you walk in with that Hollywood stuff, sounds real jealous. Just let him cook. He didn't even get drafted yeah. yet. Let him get to the field first. Thank you. I, s- <laughs> like, I say with him, uh, like when I read the quote, I was like, huh? Right. When I like saw the video of him saying it, it felt like more, all right, he wants to motivate him like just to not be complacent and be like, oh, I want a Heisman. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm all of that. Like what you did in college is he's right. Which doesn't is doesn't matter. Like, yeah. Johnny Manziel, he was right. top dog. <laughs> Cabbage comes to the NFL, it's you ain't even feel me. Right. So uh, I think that, uh, and I think I've been victim to that. Like I would kind of hold it against Kayla Williams because he ain't go to the combine and stuff. But no, nah, he he does. He he just want to play football. He just want to play football. Yeah. But it's like when you when you know that you're the number one overall pick, it's like. What am I doing all this all this stuff for? Yeah, like, y'all know I'm I'm going to Chicago. Like, yeah, but yeah, no, he's got to prove it. It's gonna be pressure on him, like Facts. a lot of pressure on him to perform. Facts. Now, the crazy thing that would happen, which I doubt it, if he didn't go number one overall, then all this is just crazy. Like that would be the most wild plot twist ever. But <laughs> yeah, okay, crazy. right. And then the last topic before we wrap the show. I'm just going to get straight to it, right? There has been a lot of discussion around these younger athletes and their relationships. So one big one right now is Houston Rockets player Jalen Green, who is 22, who is expecting a baby with 39-year-old Dre and Michelle. And this is not the first relationship we've seen like that. We've seen LaMelo Ball and Anna Montana. You know, LaMelo's around our age. Anna Montana's 34. They're not expecting a kid, though. But there's a lot of, you know, these things that we're seeing. So given that you are a younger male, I got to ask your opinion first. How do you feel about these older women dating these younger athletes? Do you think it's a problem or do you think that we are exaggerating what's going on? I mean, (laughs) it's kind of like don't hate the player, hate the game. (laughs) And Jalen Green, he lost the game. (laughs) He lost. I'm sorry, like, and look, like, I feel like you 21, you're a millionaire, rock star, you go to eat each city, you know, you're a top dog. Like, you know, a lot of people would make the same decisions that, like, you know, he would make just because uh the amount of access that you have and you able to access people that you probably, when you was younger, was like, oh, my God, she's so bad and all right. that. 
But on you know, Dre's side, it's just strategic. Like, literally, all the guys that's her age, they know what she about. So it's like, they not about a wife her. Right. So she looking at the young guys that don't know nothing, that just look at her and like they are just like, yeah, boing, <laughs> boy, like, and so I think, yeah, with Jalen Green, he just fell victim to the game and he lost. Like, that's what these other women gonna do. They're gonna go back to the young guys that gonna make them really feel like, you know, how they felt when they was back in, in their in their twenties. But that's what I feel like a lot of you know, some women do is the guys don't want you your age. So now you you try to cling on some, so you gotta go to the <laughs> the younger guys that don't know any better. But yeah, right. Jalen Green, he lost that. He lost. Yeah, it's so crazy how that works because I feel like the way society goes, like it'll be like an older woman going for a younger man that just so happens to be a millionaire, right? But then if it's like yeah. reverse and it's like an an older man going for a younger woman, the, the man happens to be the millionaire and the girl, you know, might not really do nothing, you know. But me personally, I'll be damned if I'm 40 years old getting knocked up by a 21 year old dude. I don't care. Oh, That's shit. silly. Like, that is so silly. And like, what does that say about you? Especially because your son is the same age. Like what I was saying previously is like, I'm all for like, if that is your your dream, your aspiration as a younger man, and that she, like, she is so bad. Like I've been watching her all my life. Go do your thing. But a baby is an entire other situation. It's just one of those things that's like you could have at least wait because the fact that he's younger than us is cra- like it's crazy because we already know that we're hella young. So the fact that he's yeah. younger than us and she's turning forty. It's like you couldn't wait until he was like 26, 27 at least. Like, you know, like a little bit off the radar. Like you are hitting your peak career. Like you are balling right now. It's just like, it just makes, it literally makes no sense to me. And like, sometimes I try to think about, think it over. I'm like, oh, like maybe like, you know, like let them, let them cook. Like they have plenty. Of, nah, I'm saying right now, like uh, it yeah, just doesn't make it. sense. That's not it. Yeah. It was just one, it was, I saw this one thing from. It was Gilbert Arenas, bro. He was wild. <laughs> Gilbert Arenas and Swaggy P. Yeah. They're talking about her like, yo, back in the day. Yo, like, remember, remember that? Yeah. I'm like, I Damn. seen it. <laughs> You're That's like, tragic. Yo. Like, yeah. why you do why you do Jayla like that? Like, yeah. why you do Jayla like <laughs> Yeah, I definitely seen that I'm clip. Like, yeah, and it's like, happened. yo. But it's like also yeah, right. Also, being in the limelight, it's like everybody's gonna talk about every move you have, regardless. And you know, at the end of the day, the strong survive because you know it's gonna be a topic of discussion. Like, let's not play dumb. People are gonna talk about it because we haven't really seen stuff like that. And it's not like people. I don't want people to think that like Trey is pregnant. Leave her alone. I get that, you know. And I hope she has a safe pregnancy for sure. I hope everything goes as planned. But it's like, that doesn't dismiss you from comments. Like everybody's going to talk about something. You just happen to do it with, you know, that next up star player. Like, yeah, we're looking at you. Like it, to us, it still doesn't make sense. But, you know, if that works for y'all, that works for y'all. But we do not need that working for everybody because it really don't make sense. He could have at least been 26, 27, like at least be a little bit older. Let him figure, you know, because y'all already develop slow. <laughs> like y'all already don't develop slower than women. Saying, so it's just one of those things there. that's like, bruh. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. It's tragic. It's tragic. crazy. Well, Miles, it was a pleasure to have you on the show again. Thanks for talking football with me. <laughs> and uh, then likewise, can, uh, it was great. And then can you let people know your socials where they can follow you and follow along with your hot takes and see your upcoming projects? Yeah, you know, uh, subscribe to my podcast, Real Talk with MJ. Uh, follow on Instagram, TikTok, um, you know, all that personal page, Miles Johnson TV. Um, but yeah, it's a pleasure to be on here. You know, I saw the comments. They was they was they was rocking with us. Yeah. The first time I came on here. So you know, it's great to just, you know, 
talk football. Yes. Talk, uh, you know, cougars trying to go after <laughs> my young brothers out here. Right. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's always, always good to talk sports and all that. Yes, of course. Miles, it was a pleasure. Well, that's it for today's episode. Y'all can hashtag check out the stat so we can continue. We, so we can continue the discussion next week and maybe your question or take will be featured. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for hanging out with me and checking out the stats. I'll see y'all next week. Uh, uh,